Hey everybody, I'm Lee with Olsen Equine and I hope you're having a great day. Today, I wanna to show you a few things that's just gonna make everyday shoeing just a little bit easier for you. Come check this out. So today we're gonna to be working with the Aventor Plus. It's a little different spin on the normal Aventor. It's still a wide web, it still has traction, but it is a symmetrical shape on the front. Little broader toe, little wider heels for a fuller fit and a little bit more sole relief built in. The hind pattern comes in unsymmetrical. They're rights and lefts. This little dot's gonna tell you which foot that's for. So the lateral side's gonna be longer and a little fuller than the medial side, which is gonna nail on a lot of horses a lot easier. So I'm gonna show you, we're gonna shoe this horse with them right now. We're gonna stick it in our Pro Forge right now. These forges are sweet. If you haven't seen it, keep track of the time. It gets hot really fast. So, okay, so talking about shoeing. So come over here and we've got this foot trimmed up. This foot has been barefoot. It's not perfect, but if you would get to where you just measure the widest point right across the center of rotation in the foot, widest point's usually right there. So that's gonna be five inches. Then we're gonna measure the heels. The heels are three inches. That's a really nice foot that's well taken care of. So first step right here is just take your ruler and mark five inches on the anvil. And then you mark the heels right there. Another thing you can do is, I know that's three inches on my anvil, just to the edge of the hardy hole. So now I've got some measurements for shape and shoes. But if you don't shoe hot, it's totally fine. I used to shoe cold for a long time, but watch this. Shaping hot is so much easier. This side bends, this side of the line straightens, and right in the middle forges. So if you hit right on top while it's hot, it's gonna smash it together. So. Knowing those simple facts, you do not have to be great at forging. This isn't about handmade shoes versus unhandmade or anything like that. I'm just talking about making your life easier. And this is a big and bad anvil, but you don't have to have one like that. Just as long as you got a horn and it's symmetrical, you can do this really easy. A round horn, I guess is what I meant to say. So, I'm gonna grab my tongs. Look at that shoe. already ready so one thing one thing I'd like to talk about is knocking the sole pressure out so there's two different reasons a lot of people struggle to get high nails well this is one way to get better just using the flat side my hammer slightly tipped I rotate all the way around the shoe and what that's gonna do is it's gonna cup the shoe away. And you can use the round side if you want, but now you can see the whole shoe is kind of tipped up this way. So now I know this is for the left front, so I'm gonna mark it on the right side. Now I know which side's my lateral. So this horse is pretty straight through here. So as I'm shaping, I'm, I got a line here, a line here, and a line here. I put my hammer here, and now I've got a box that I can visually see what I need to do to that foot. So the toe is pretty close. I need to straighten it. I need to straighten it, and it's going to be pretty close. These shoes, so if I want to straighten it, I come back here on the S part. You see that? See how it's wedged in there? Hit it up to it, and I hit it on the other side of the line, and it's going to bring it around. Flatten it, same thing to the other side. Bring it over here, and I'm going to hit on this side of the line, it's gonna straighten it. Now I'm gonna push it back up here, and I'm gonna hit there, there, there. Put it back in my box, and now it's, I can see that I need to bring it in a little bit more. So I'm gonna hit it here. Okay, so feet are not symmetrical. So as I look at this, that's a little straighter than this is because it's gonna get out and around that foot a little bit more. So widest points here I know, so I'm gonna bring that in just a little bit more. 
Same thing with the lateral side. So now, look at that. See how it's right on my line? There's no point in doing all this and shaping your shoe, walking over there, shaping your shoe, walking over there, where simple things like knowing where your heels are, I know that I'm gonna be in the ballpark. So, I'm gonna go check my fit now. I've been talking too much, so my, so my shoe's a little colder, but. So you can see how straight it is here that I was talking about. The lateral's pretty straight too. So another thing is you can tell by your burn where you're at. Ideally, if I wasn't talking as much, the shoe would be hotter. So you'd be able to see it a little better. But looks like the shape's really close. Look at that. I told you it was fast. Okay, so Medial side needs to be just a little straighter, so I'm going to hold it down on this side, hit it up just a little, heel in a bit, and right there. And if you don't know a lot about hot fitting, you really need to make sure your shoe's level when you go to the foot because you're ultimately trimming the foot with this hot shoe. So if it's unlevel, you're going to burn it unlevel. So you can tell this horse was barefoot, so this is a good way to really line the foot up because when they're barefoot it's hard to get them trimmed exactly this right where they have low spots and high spots. Now, we got a good burn on there. You just have to be careful that you don't over burn them. So, I like that burn a lot and a little light there, but better to leave it and not over trim the rest of the foot. So, as you're looking at your fit, you can see where the foot is on here. So, next thing I'm going to talk about nailing is you actually have to have your shoe outside around the foot. So, I'm not worried about this not fitting. I'm worried about that and that because I need to nail up high and to do that, I have to have my shoe out where it's supposed to be. All right, so we haven't changed this since we made the video about shaping it. So keeping in mind what this foot likes, looks like in your box in the corners, just like Nikki Smith taught me, is what's gonna make this shoe fit. And if you just look at your shoe and look at your shape, and ask yourself, does this look like this? You're gonna go a long ways. So as we look at this foot and shoe shape, that could be nailed on right there. So, so you can see it's out and around a little bit and it's out and around a little bit right here. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to marker it and shorten my medial heel right here a little bit. This horse has a real straight sidewall or medial side, which is going to make it longer. So I'm just going to shorten that up and we'll nail it on. First step is always making sure it's balanced. That's the beautiful part about burning a shoe on. Usually, if your shoe's level, it's going to be pretty balanced. As long as your trim wasn't way off. 
So a lot of people worry about sole pressure right here. Don't ever forget about the seed of corns right here. And gotta be careful after you hot fit your shoes, but everybody likes to trim them short, but if you put pressure on their sole, that will be a problem. You see what I'm doing with my fingers right here? I go a lot off of feel. We start with the third nail. Another thing I'll do is I'll put my ring finger where I want the nail to come out with, out at. What that's going to do is it makes me tip my nail to the correct angle. Another thing for keeping it in the hoof wall is light taps. And when you want it to come out, hit a little bit harder, as you can see right there. Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. Come down here. Okay, so those are very high nails. You can see this one is just barely tipped out. And really, this should be the highest. This should be a little lower. That should be the lowest one. So that tipped out doesn't bother me at all. That is a great nail. The problem is the general public does not think so. So first thing, anything that goes wrong is that the vet sometimes don't even know. They're going to be like, that nail's too high. So even though we know it's not, to me, that was a perfect nail. If you take it after it's already been driven and you stick your tip in and just slightly tip it away giving it just a little more curve and you just go right back down the same nail hole just tap 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 yep and I did it just a little too much so a little less There we go. So, pretty good nails. That's, you could tell that was the high spot and that's where it came out. So, it's not perfectly in line. Ideally, the perfect nail line would be right there in the middle. But those are all three good nails. And But the problem is that when people look at this nail, they're gonna like it better than this. They're gonna say, why are those too high? What you should be asking, why is that one so low? But at the end of the day, those are all really good nails. And I'm not saying you gotta have really high, sky high nails like that on every foot. I'm just telling you that those hold better they, if they pull, they, they're in quality hoof wall and they always pull clean. Something to think about. I hope you have a great day and God bless America.